Hey, bruh. It's time to do another Nickelodeon sitcom, bruh. Oh, cool. Dude, I finally get to rant about how underrated Henry Danger is. Gotta do Game Shakers too, bruh. Hmm? Gotta do Game Shakers too, bruh. Why Why would I do that? Have you seen literally anything worthwhile about that show? I don't fucking know, bruh. All I know is people want you to talk about it. I wish to die. But I can make this work. Yo, who the fuck is Matt CMG? Hey, Paisanos, it me, Matt CMG. And as we near the end of our Nickelodeon sitcom 2010's retrospective series, fuck, that's a terrible name, I think it's high time I talked about some stuff from the late 2010s. Before leaving Nickelodeon in 2019 for, um, <clears throat> Not sexual assault allegations. Stan the Feet Man Schneider developed two final shows. Henry Danger in 2014 and Game Shakers in 2015. I've seen a lot of mixed reception to Henry Danger and overwhelmingly negative reception to Game Shakers, so I decided to check them out for myself to pass my own judgment. Uh, l let it be known that these are some hard fucking shows to pirate. Allegedly. Yeah. Anyways, I found myself really enjoying Henry Danger while I thought Game Shakers was fucking atrocious at first because it kind of grew on me a little bit, and I think I figured out why. See, there's some key things that these two shows do that make them what they are, but I think it's just as important to look at how the fan base views them as well. So let's get weird, let's get wild, and let's get right into why Henry Danger succeeded while Game Shakers failed. Let's also get into why my fucking life is in shambles. So I usually don't do lengthy synopses in these videos because I like to operate under the assumption that you've seen what I'm talking about, but with these two shows in particular, I think it's necessary because they're not as popular as like, you know, iCarly or some of the other shows I've talked about, and I wouldn't be surprised if some viewers around my age or older haven't even heard of these shows. Like I said, they're kinda hard to find on piracy sites. Allegedly. Uh, you know, support the original release and all that, but uh, also fuck you. Henry Danger follows the adventures of Henry Hart. When looking for an after-school job, he finds himself sending on to be the sidekick to Captain Man, the indestructible superhero who protects the city of Swellview. Over the course of the series, they fight a variety of villains in their pretty sizable rogues gallery, but when he's not doing that, Henry is often struggling with his basic teenage problems. They do the whole teen hero who has to keep his two lives separate thing, you know, he fights crime but still has to go to school, that whole trope. They're pretty tongue-in-cheek about it, though, so I give it a pass. Game Shakers, on the other hand, revolves around a group of four kids in New York who start up a game development studio. Their company is co-owned by the rapper Double G, who gets them into wacky situations. You're gonna hear me say this a lot throughout this video, but it's basically discount iCarly. Instead of kids make web show, it's kids make games. Now, despite these differing premises, you're probably thinking, why are you comparing two completely different things as if they're remotely similar? And I have a reason for that. Even though these two shows are totally different, they're both made by the same crew around the same time. And I I think it's interesting to see how one worked while the other didn't because of that. I've gone on record before claiming that I don't like comparing things because I feel like it's kind of disingenuous depending on how you do it, but I gotta find a way to squeeze both of these into one video. I, I don't got enough in me for one more. As these two synopses could probably tell you, Henry Danger is the more interesting show and is definitely the better of the two. I think that it gets a bad rap because of the terrible cartoon spinoff, The Adventures of Kid Danger, but the actual show itself is pretty decent. Can't say the same for Danger Force, but that's just because I haven't seen it yet. The synopsis for Game Shakers was pretty short and simple, and that's because it doesn't really have anything going for it aside from the premise. This brings us to the first point of comparison the premises. Each of the Schneider shows tend to have pretty unique and timeless premises. Drake and Josh is about two stepbrothers, Zoe 101 is about a boarding school, iCarly was ahead of its time being about the internet, and Victorious is about the performing arts. These are things that are always going to be a thing, and while they can be a little dated at times, you always go into it with the knowledge that it's a little older. The sexual predators? The who? It's the premise of Henry Danger and of Game Shakers that I think distinguishes the two. Henry Danger is a superhero show, and superheroes have obviously been a thing for decades, and though the market is a bit oversaturated right now, they're probably always going to be a thing. The thing about superhero stories is that there's always built-in conflict and built-in character development. If you need to develop a superhero, you do so through a villain. That part is easy, so your focus can then be on other aspects of that character. I think Henry Danger is able to do that pretty well, and with a comedic twist at that. Game Shakers is about a game development studio, and while sure, that's timeless, game devs are never going away, they never fully utilize the concept, and when they do, it comes across as really out of touch. For reference, Game Shakers came out in 2015, so it was right at the tail end of the mobile game boom from the early 2010s. By that point, this stuff was well established. We weren't really seeing viral mobile games anymore, so the premise of kids making mobile games kind of only worked at that time, and even then, just barely. And unlike the iCarly web show, for example, the games in Game Shakers never really have anything to do with most episodes. Like, they'll mention offhand that they're working on a game, or that they'll be doing some wacky 
anything in the studio for a game, but it usually amounts to simply just visual gags. There's rarely ever a gaming-centric episode of Game Shakers, which is kind of unfortunate because you could do a lot with that. It's like that, like that show Mythic Quest or something. I I've never seen it, but it seems like it knows what it's doing. Or I could be completely wrong, bash me with a rock, I don't, I don't know. Ironically enough, some of the better Game Shakers episodes ended up being about Double G's antics and had nothing to do with video games at all. Game Shakers had a really bad start, like the first season is borderline unwatchable because of its gamer premise, but it does improve as the show goes on and shifts away from the whole gaming thing, which I think is a testament to how the premise didn't really work. That's one of the biggest factors that determined how people viewed these shows. Henry Danger can be understood by people young and old because of its timeless concept, well, Game Shakers is really only understood by younger people because its concept only really worked at the time. Yup, these are the two 7th grade girls who are currently tearing it up with their hit game, Sky Will. But okay, the premise is one thing, characters and the general writing are obviously more important. Henry Danger's characters can be rather complex, and they go through arcs, some clear and some subtle, while the main group of Game Shakers doesn't really have that, with many of them fitting a pre-existing trope that they never really do anything with. For example, Ray from Henry Danger is a pretty complex character, at least when the show wants him to be. He is a hero to the people of Swellview and clearly cares deeply for the city and the people in it. You know, obviously he wouldn't be doing any of this if he didn't care. But at the same time, we also see that just because he's captured Captain Man that he's not always the best person. He's been shown to be selfish by ignoring emergencies to go do fun stuff instead, he's narcissistic and can't handle any kind of threat to his self-image, he often abuses his identity as Captain Man for personal gain and other petty reasons, and he's an absolute man-child, throwing a fit and making a scene the minute he doesn't get what he wants. I am a shallow, impulsive, immature man-child! <laughs> So you will apologize to both of us and make us a fiesta size tour or I will blow this whole thing sky high! These traits are very subtle at first and become more prominent over time. And while you could make the argument that that is flanderization, I don't see it that way. In the first few episodes, it's implied that Captain Man is running this whole crime fighting operation on his own with some help from Gooch. So he's a lot more responsible in the earlier episodes. But as more people join the team, he starts taking things less seriously because there are now more people to lessen the burden. At least, that's how I see it. But regardless, Ray is often called out on his shitty behavior and he himself addresses it at certain points, and only on a few occasions does he ever actually learn from this. It's clear that his attitude was brought about by his upbringing, where he wasn't allowed a normal childhood because of his powers, so he never really grew up. But despite all of his flaws, he's still a hero to the people of Swellview, and he gets the job done when it needs to be. That's depth right there. Henry himself is another great example. He goes through the typical teen hero life balance thing, but in a way that subverts the trope. A show that does this same trope, like Danny Phantom for instance, usually has the main character learn a lesson by the end, something along the lines of, you know, work, life, balance, great power comes great responsibility type stuff, you know the drill. Henry, on the other hand, never seems to learn his lesson. Like, an episode will be all about how he can't solve a problem as Kid Danger, he has to solve it as Henry Hart, but they'll then flip that on its head and have him abuse his status as Kid Danger to solve the problem anyways. We see how he starts to take after Ray in many ways, but unlike Ray, Henry knows when the line's been crossed. Plus, Henry often faces real consequences for his actions, such as permanently losing his powers for the greater good, or being unable to graduate because he spent too much time being Kid Danger and not enough time in school. He feels like a real person with real problems. The characters of Game Shakers, on the other hand, are entirely one note. They take the basic outline of iCarly's cast, but water it down immensely. Here's what I mean. iCarly's cast can be boiled down to five main tropes. The normal main girl lead, the rowdy best friend, the smart one, the wacky adult, and the weird kid. Game Shakers essentially copies this. Babe is the normal one, Kenzie's the smart one, Double G is the wacky adult, and Hudson is the weird kid. They don't really have a Sam, which makes Trip the only original character on the show. The difference between these two is that iCarly's cast had complexity, and each character's distinct personalities provided any pairing of characters with an interesting dynamic. The characters in Game Shakers lack individual personalities, so you could pair up any of them and get pretty much the same outcome. Babe is extremely basic, and even a full season into the show when you still don't really know anything about her. She's a girl, she hangs out with her friends, and she likes boys. Revolutionary concept. It seems like they wanted her to be THE main character, but she's never really treated as such. Kenzie was promising in the pilot, which is saying something because the pilot was not good. Because being the smart one, she's constantly nervous about everything, and Babe helps her to be more confident. This is dropped almost immediately, and she becomes yet just another girl character. Don't even get me started on Hudson. It seems like the writers wanted to add Hudson as like their Gibby, but without realizing what makes Gibby charming. Gibby worked because though he was weird, gullible, and impossibly stupid, he still had some emotional depth to him. Gibby! Hudson is all the craziness of Gibby, but with none of the subtlety. Every scene with this character is exhausting. It feels like it goes on forever because every other line is him misunderstanding an extremely basic sentence, and it's often for a joke that wasn't even that funny to begin with. Though in fairness, they do tone him down a lot in the second season to where he's tolerable. Gibby! 
The only characters that are really unique are Trip and Double G, and they pretty much carry the show, and the latter is honestly only because of Kel Mitchell's performance. Kel Mitchell is the best part of this show. Every time he's on screen, there's just that Kel energy that makes even the worst jokes pretty enjoyable. Trip is the only character in the show with any kind of real depth that carries through. In the pilot, he's bored of his dad's antics and wants to live a normal life, and once he gets that, there are some episodes about him struggling to adjust to that. He's the gamer. He's the gamer. He's the gamer. But they actually utilize this talent throughout the show, and it makes sense why Trip is around. He's their game tester, so it makes sense why he works at Game Shakers as opposed to Hudson, who's literally just there because. Unlike the other shows where there was a titular main character, Game Shakers doesn't seem to have one. The entire time I was watching the show, I was thinking, Who's the main character Who? here? You could argue that it's an ensemble show, but the ensemble doesn't really matter because most of the characters and their dynamics with each other are basically the same. In fairness though, a lot of these character issues are somewhat fixed after the first season, and maybe that was just me getting used to the characters, but by the end, each character does have their own quirks. I only say this in the sake of fairness though, because like I've said throughout this video, that first season in particular is R-U-F-F -F rough. Like, the first season being as bad as it is is definitely the reason so many people wrote it off completely, but it does actually improve. But Here's the thing about tropes though. Henry Danger has the tropes as well, but these characters are still unique and complex alongside that. For instance, Charlotte is the smart one of the group, but not only is that intelligence utilized frequently in the show, but it's also a defining part of her interactions with almost every other character. She plays the proverbial straight man to characters like Ray or Jasper, and there's more to her than just her intelligence. And speaking of Jasper, he starts off as the weird kid trope, but that's not the only defining thing about him. Early on in the show, he's obsessed with buckets because that's wacky Whoa! and random, and that's arguably the character at its worst, but even in having this really obnoxious joke attached to him, he still feels and acts like a real kid in many ways. He has genuine emotional moments at times. He retains his weirdness, but it's not the only thing about him. I think that's what ultimately sets these two shows apart. Henry Danger's characters feel like real people, but are also unique from one another. Game Shaker's characters feel like they're filling a trope quota. Though Game Shaker's characters do have their moments, and they aren't all bad all the time, Henry Danger is much more consistent in this regard, hence why it resonated with people and Game Shaker's didn't. Outside of the main cast, Henry Danger lends itself to a lot more variety than Game Shakers with its recurring cast. A superhero show means you need villains, which means we get a recurring rogues gallery of some wacky cartoony villains. The Toddler, Dr. Miniac, The Time Jerker, Frankini, these are just a few of the show's recurring characters, and those are just the people that they fight. You also get Henry's parents that are pretty enjoyable, and the news anchors Trent Overunder and Mary Gaperman, whose names are definitely some kind of sexual innuendo that I haven't figured out yet. Sex. Recurring characters help make the world feel alive, and Henry Danger nails that pretty well, even if most of the recurring cast isn't that deep. Game Shakers only has a few recurring characters. Teague, the waiter at Fooders, the restaurant in the first season and a half that was phased out for seemingly no reason, and Bobby Dong, Double G's friend who hooks him up with wacky inventions for very specific uses. Hey, you guys remember Socko from iCarly? Bobby Dong is him, but racist. These were legitimately the only two recurring characters I could think of, and they each only show up in like a single digit number of episodes, and even then, they aren't really characters. They're more like plot devices. Game Shakers takes place in New York City, so I think it was a massive missed opportunity for there to not be any crazy, insano recurring characters. Like, y'all ever been to New York? A lot of fucking crazies in that city. Hey guys, I'm in New York City just hanging out. It's commented on maybe once in the entire show. I am actually genuinely surprised that Dan Schneider, the guy who notoriously uses homeless people as punchlines in his shows, never made a single homeless joke in the show where homeless people are most likely to show up. You know, you know something crazy about Game Shakers? Snoop Dogg appears as a guest star, not once, not twice, but three different times. I don't know why the fuck Snoop Dogg and Nickelodeon get along so well. Like, his appearance on Big Time Rush back in the day made sense because his kids were into the show, so he wanted to be on it for them. But why the fuck would Snoop give a shit about Game Shakers, a show made five years later for even younger kids? More importantly, why does Nick think it's a good idea to market Snoop Dogg on their kids' network when Snoop is one of the least kid-friendly celebrities out there? You know, I like Snoop, but when you think of Snoop Dogg, you think of vulgar rap lyrics and copious amounts of weed. This is the guy y'all are okay with doing cameos in your kid shows? Okay, sure. Hang on, somebody's trying to video chat me. Oh, hey, it's Snoop Dogg!
Something Henry Danger has over Game Shakers are its running gags and acknowledgement of continuity, which is great because it helps flesh out the world and it builds familiarity with the viewer, making it easier to get into it. Running gags are, in my opinion, one of the best ways for a writer or a writing team to instill confidence in their viewer, you know, shows that they care. Like, hey, we know the fans will get this joke, which helps the fans feel more connected to the show. Community is one of my favorite examples of this. The running gags just build off of each other. Off the top of my head, I can name several of Henry Danger's running gags, like the Fred Lobster commercial, Schwaz being unable to pronounce basic words, Ray being obsessed with Henry's mom, and the fact that everybody forgets that Piper has a driver's license. It's established! These running gags also tend to get meta, as does the show itself in the later seasons, and while meta doesn't necessarily equal good, it shows a level of self-awareness in the writer's room. Apparently, a lot of these running gags were inside jokes between the cast that they ended up incorporating into the show, which definitely enhances the cast's chemistry and helps you feel more connected to the characters. Chris Nowak, our, our current show writer, has kind of let us kind of... Um, put in our own little stuff, and I do feel like we've started to write the show <laughs> for ourselves, <laughs> essentially. It helps the viewer become more invested in the world and the characters, but it does so without the viewer necessarily knowing about previous continuity. The jokes work better if you're familiar with the show, but they can still work without that. But the former may entice you to watch more of the show to get the joke further. Does that make any fucking sense? I don't know. Probably not. Game Shakers, on the other hand, doesn't seem to be as self-aware. This show seems to operate under loud equals funny, and it is very in your face. Someone is always screaming, something over over the top is always happening, and it's usually never brought up again. There isn't a single subtle joke in this show. It's part of life. Well, no one told me life was gonna be this way. Something about Henry Danger's running gags is that for the most part, they're subtle, or at least as subtle as you can get with a laugh track blaring every 10 seconds. Like, one of my favorite recurring things in Henry Danger is when somebody gets Henry's attention, he'll say, Hey, what's up, Big Dog? Which isn't inherently funny, but the way he delivers it gets a giggle out of me. Like, I quote it semi-frequently. Game Shakers doesn't have this subtlety. Everybody is just screaming all of the time. There are never any meaningful callbacks, never anything that treats the audience like an intelligent human being. Like, Game Shakers doesn't have any iconic sayings or jokes or gags that fans of the show can recite to each other, nothing that would foster a dedicated fan base. Running gags are obviously not necessary, but they are helpful in fostering a dedicated fan base, which is again part of why Henry Danger succeeded and why Game Shakers didn't. At least in my expert analysis, fucking eat my dick. Part of what made many of the older shows both successful and entertaining was that the cast, and thereby the characters, grew up with the audience. This is something that Henry Danger nailed, but Game Shakers didn't quite get the chance to do. And that's not a slight against the cast of Game Shakers, because they obviously seem like fine people and fine actors. That that are just given shit to work with. But I bet if the cast were given more agency over their characters and the show as a whole, it would have been a lot better. Had the actors been given the chance to grow up a little bit more, they could have given much more nuanced performances and possibly even contributed to the writing itself, much like the Henry Danger cast. We started to see hints of this in season three, where the kids were all a few years older than when they started, and the writing seemed to shift accordingly to accommodate that. Like I mentioned before, Kel Mitchell's performance was what made Double G such a fun character. It was the actor, not the writing, and I feel like the rest of the cast should have been given that opportunity. Oh, and, uh, and uh, since they're all uh, legal adults now, uh, hey, Cree. What's up, mama? I'll come to Coney Island and take a spin on a cyclone. Another of these disparities is that the writing in general for these two shows are so different. Game Shakers does this thing where they present a problem for the episode, but instead of solving that problem, they'll present a new problem near the end that does get solved, and it comes across as the writers hoping you forget that they didn't solve the original problem. As a result, almost every episode feels incredibly rushed and barely any of the plot lines are properly resolved. Game Shakers will just end the episode in what feels like the middle of a story. For instance, there's an episode where Kenzie is really obsessed with this pop star that they're making a game for, but she just doesn't like her. So Kenzie spends the whole episode trying to make her like her. But they just drop it in the last few minutes of the episode and it never gets resolved, instead resolving the B-plot with Dub's antics. This isn't the only episode that's like this either. There's an episode where Double G really wants to work with a popular singer, but to do that, the Game Shakers need to hire their grandson who's kind of a piece of shit. They do that in what is ultimately a plot line that they stole from iCarly, and Dub gets his duet. But right when you think the plot is going to kick into gear, it turns out that the singer can't sing and the episode just ends on that joke. Like they set up this idea that Dub will have to deal with the fact that this singer he looks up to can't sing anymore, but it's just an ending gag, and they don't even address the bad employee thing again. It feels like they took the first five minutes of an episode and stretched it out over 20 minutes. My point is, you can't present a new problem at the end when you haven't even solved your original problem yet. Unless you have a clever way of killing two birds with one stone, like what Game Shaker's predecessors were able to do, 
That's a no-no. The show was canceled before it got a finale, but I think it would have been funny if the finale consisted of all the unresolved plot lines coming back to bite them in the ass. Like, that almost would have saved the entire show in my eyes. No meme. It seemed like the writers had plans for ongoing plot lines going into the next season, involving Babe's various romances and possible Henry Danger crossovers, evidenced by the last episode being a cliffhanger, which might have been what the show needed to contend with its predecessors, but it was canceled before that could happen. Henry Danger also has weird plot resolution issues, but in a different kind of way. I would defend Henry Danger because while the plot gets resolved in very anticlimactic and subversive ways, that's typically the joke. Like, they at least have a point when they do it. Plus, I think it's worthy of noting that Henry Danger has straight-up arcs, so some things are purposefully left unresolved with the intention of coming back to it later, which you don't really see from a lot of these shows, and definitely not in Game Shakers. That's not to say being plot-driven is inherently better than being episodic, it's not, but I gauge that more people would probably be into the former. Like, Henry Danger had this ambitious grandiosity to some of its bigger episodes. Like, its premise really lent itself to these big event episodes that previous shows like iCarly were known for, which Game Shakers just Hi, didn't there's... have. Game Shakers having an episodic structure does make it feel a bit cozy. Like, it's not a good show, but it's a fun show, if you know what I mean. But Henry Danger has a lot more going on under the hood if you care to dig deep enough into it. Because of this partially plot-driven approach, Henry Danger has consequences that stick around for the rest of the series, and things that don't always go back to the status quo. It's it's engaging to see how things change as the show goes on, with characters learning Henry's identity, or things that seemed like one-off jokes actually becoming relevant again. Game Shakers just resets everything back to the status quo, and while there's nothing wrong with that inherently, sitcoms have obviously been doing it for years, it doesn't really work because of the way the episodic problems are resolved. Many episodes simply feel incomplete, and as a result, the entire show is like a run-on sentence. You didn't finish this thought, but you're already on to another one. Oh, I'm done with this episode! Overall, it's really baffling to me how two shows made at the same time and with many of the same writers ended up so different. Well, I think one of the main reasons was that Henry Danger not only had a lot more writers than Game Shakers did, but the cast also became part of the production, which in my expert research and humble opinion can really improve things. Pretty much every writer on Game Shakers had already worked on other Nickelodeon shows, which makes sense because Schneider likes to keep his people close. Henry Danger, on the other hand, was only co-created by Schneider, with Dana Olsen serving as the other co-creator. Right off the bat, you get a lot less Schneider-isms than you typically expect. But I think most importantly, Jace Norman, the actor who played Henry took up a producing role on the show around the final season, and so did some of the other cast members, which I think did really great things for the character and the show. You know, who, who knows a character better than the person who plays them? Probably a lot of people, but that's beside the point. The point is, it's a lot more beneficial to have different writers come in with their own takes on things than it is to have a bunch of yes men who will just write whatever. This was what made Henry Danger feel like a show with a lot of care put into it, while Game Shakers felt like a tax write-off. <laughs> Like I've alluded to a few times in this video, Game Shaker Season 1 is not good. Terrible, in fact, heinous, if you will, atrocious, if you'd be so inclined. It's not good, but it does get better. The entire show gets a really bad rap because of its bad first season, but I don't think anyone even bothered to give the other two seasons a chance. Season 2 is a noticeable improvement, though still not great, but Season 3 is at the very least watchable. Let me put it this way, right? The best episodes of Game Shakers are on par with the worst episodes of iCarly, which is to say that they aren't necessarily coherent narratives, but they're at least fun. But much like the worst episodes of iCarly, even the best episodes of Game Shakers are pretty substanceless. Like, you know it's a problem when the only interviews you can find about the show or about the crossover you had with the better show. I think the reason Game Shaker's first season is so bad is because it was clearly rushed out the door. It was made to be the sister show to Henry Danger, but Henry Danger was made to be the sister show to Sam and Cat. Sam and Cat was prematurely cancelled, so they needed a new show. It's no coincidence that Henry Danger and Sam and Cat started in the same year, and Game Shakers came out one year later, when Sam and Cat was cancelled. It was a replacement, and they clearly didn't put their best foot forward. <laughs> Feet, Schneider, eh, whatever. Anyways, I think the reason Henry Danger gets as much shit as it does is because it often gets lumped in with Game Shaker Season 1, which is really unfair when you realize that Henry Danger actually kind of slaps, but is brushed off as just as bad as Game Shakers from people who have never even seen it. If I had to, like, rank the Schneider shows, I honestly think I would rank Henry Danger in third, right behind Drake and Josh and iCarly, because I genuinely think it's that good, but I don't think that it gets the credit that it deserves. I haven't done a very good job at selling it in this video, I think, but it, it bangs. It goes kind of hard. Ah, that book slaps! Like, almost every negative review I've seen of it basically amounts to, um, this clearly comedic setup did not make any sense, or it's not as good as iCarly, which like, you know, okay, yeah, fair enough, but if being worse than iCarly is the basis for being garbage, then I don't know what to tell you. A lot of kids shows would be garbage by that standard. In fairness, a lot of Henry Danger's early episodes, and not even really whole episodes, more like jokes within those episodes, tend to lean into Game Shaker's territory, so I can see why somebody who hadn't seen the whole series would think this. Like Kim and Kanye! Thank <laughs> you. 
Hi, Charlotte. I'm a genius! What the fuck? In its entirety, though, Henry Danger has the right mix between comedy and action, serious and lighthearted moments, episodic fun, and overarching plot lines. Henry is a genuinely interesting and relatable character, and the supporting cast all have their unique quirks as well, in a way that's realistic and sets them apart from each other. Its themes of responsibility and sacrifice are honestly a step above what its predecessors do thematically. I definitely get Spider-Man vibes from it at some points. I can hear all the Spidey fans crying about that comparison, and let me tell you, you're about to cry even more in a few minutes. It's a comedic take on an otherwise overdone premise, and if you're hesitant about it, I'd recommend giving it a shot. At the end of the day, neither of these shows are objectively any worse than their predecessors, but many people claim them to be because they didn't grow up with them. I know, it's kind of a milk toast take, and I'm probably gonna get shit from people who take sitcoms too seriously, but like, I, I don't care. <laughs> See, the difference between the older shows like Drake and Josh or iCarly, and the newer shows like Henry Danger or Game Shakers, is that they were made under are completely different contexts. A lot of these older shows were made pre-smartphones, mid-internet boom, and were made to appeal to a particular age range. The newer ones are the opposite. They were made during the smartphone internet era, but were clearly targeted towards that same age range. Obviously, kids back then and kids today are completely different, so why wouldn't you expect the show is to change to appeal to them? Both eras, if you will, were made for kids, and you can't expect the network to make every show grow up with you. Like, can you really blame these shows for doing the whole, look now, isn't the internet funny? Crazy! Whoa! When that's like literally what kids are into, you know, like that may be cringe to us as adults, but to kids, that's that's funny. That's cool. They like that. Oh, oh but it's it's bad though. Okay, and I Carly wasn't exactly high fucking art either. Kids are dumb. You weren't smart as a kid. I wasn't smart as a kid. Nobody is. I know for a fact that my parents hated the shows that I watched as a kid, and I'm sure your parents probably feel the same. So who the fuck are we to judge what the next generation likes? Unless it's like Spider-Man Elsa fetish videos. That that shit's fucked. Needs to be stopped. Our parents and grandparents will defend the stuff that they grew up with, we'll defend the stuff that we grew up with, and kids today will go on to defend the stuff they grew up with. And there is nothing wrong with that. Moral of the story it's not that these kids' shows are getting worse, it's that they stopped being made for you. There's literally no reason at all to stop watching kids' shows just because you got a little bit older. <laughs> Who are you talking to? The other moral of the story. Put Kid Danger in All-Star Brawl. This is not a joke, this is real, put him in. But that is all for this video, so leave a like if you enjoyed it. Leave a comment down below letting me know what your thoughts are on Henry Danger and Game Shakers. Do you like them? Do you hate them? Are you ambivalent to them like a normal person? Be sure to subscribe and to check out my Patreon because there's only one episode left of my Nick Retrospective series. And I think it's time we return to where it all began. I've been Matt CMG, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. What's up, Danger? Miles per hour with a blindfold on. Mama always asking, where did I go wrong? What's up, danger? <sighs> What's up, danger? Traveled 100 miles, I'm knocking at your door. And I don't really care if you ain't done wrong. Come on, what's up, danger? <sighs> don't be a stranger. I like it when trouble brews, I want dad change. I like it when there's turbulence on my airplanes. I like it when I sense things that I can't see yet. Swimming with sharks when they ain't feed yet Cause I like high chances that I might lose I like it all on the edge just like you Ay, I like tall buildings so I can leap off of them I go hard with it no matter how dark it is Where does Henry Hart end and Kid Danger begin? I'm not graduating from high school because of how committed I am to this job You were only 13 when you took that off You didn't know what you're getting into Let's chew it and do it If I'm crazy, I'm on my own If I'm waiting, it's on my throne if I sound lazy, just ignore my tone Cause I'm always gonna answer when you call my phone Like, what's up, danger? Like, what's up, danger? Can't stop me now! I said I got you now! I'm right here, at your door I won't leave Want more. What's up, danger? Yeah, what's up, danger? Can't stop me now. Yeah. I said I got you now. Come on, yeah, what's up, danger? Come on, I said, what's up, danger? That shit went hard in the paint.